finally block one. 42 days later after we started, who would have ever thought that uh, if we'd waited one more day, we would have picked over three months. So it would have been March, April, May, so we were only one day short. Initially, there was the, the fear that we were, were we going to be able to harvest at all and um, whether we should start harvesting quickly just to get it in. So we had a, um, had a vintage. Uh, but then you know, we, we decided that um, you know, we didn't want to have quality of wine in the, in, in the cellars that uh, we weren't going to be happy with, so we thought uh, we, we just got to play it how, how we normally would and harvest when things were appropriately ripe. Were we going to be sitting and watching fruit rotting on the vines? Luckily, the government recognised that we are a key industry. This is a $2 billion export industry every year and New Zealand's going to need the wine that we're making now to help it in its recovery. Really interesting just considering the, um, you know, the picking team because we are reliant on you know, the travellers. We um, usually, at least a third of our team is made up of um, uh, you know, the backpacker types. You know, just thinking about those kids and you know they, they can't even move so they're stuck here and in the accommodation that they've got and you know who knows when they can get on a, on a, on a plane to fly home so there's a, a lot of responsibility and you know we're extremely appreciative of their commitment to stay with us. This is our bubble. <laughs> this is a bubble we're all living together walking together mm -hmm goal of Peking was to limit uh, the contact between people, observing the social distancing. We had to respect the two meters rule, um, which makes it quite tricky sometimes, but I think in New Zealand it's easier because you have uh, the rural spacing more than back in Europe. It was strict and weird at times to be socially distanced and picking in a time that's supposed to be all about like celebration, but I think we still, there was still wonderful, happy times, even amongst the weirdness of trying to keep social distance and being far away from each other. This will be my eighth harvest. Definitely the most unique. It's been um, a really hectic season. We've been really privileged to be able to pull in those grapes and be able to continue to harvest even through this COVID period. Getting protocols into place to make sure everybody was practicing their um, distancing making sure that the crews had the right sanitation um, abilities and really uh, yeah, practicing that two metre rule has been the biggest thing that we've been having to put into place. That's not too difficult for us because we'd like to spread out and work um, by ourselves a little bit and concentrate on the fruit. You know we've had to be a lot more vigilant when it comes to as people start to move towards the end or we're taking fruit close towards the, uh, the final phase of trying to sort it, that we've had to scatter people apart to be able to do that. And dare I say it, we have to sanitise, sanitise, sanitise. We have had to be uber serious. There was no um, sanitizer available quickly, so we had to come up with a solution, but we knew we had our own brandy. Um, we have a product called Fien, F-I-N-E. We even had to take what we probably would have been bottling and use that for the first week. Um, and actually use that as a hand sanitizer. Not very many people can say they can use their own biodynamic brandy as a sterilant or as a uh, sanitizer. After we understood we could harvest, then the real issue was how do we do this? How do we make protocols that enable us to be safe, for us to keep everybody else safe and get the job done? And that was really Blair's job. He did a fantastic job of thinking it through, planning it, and being absolutely uncompromising on safety. Um, we created a, a winery bubble of myself, my assistant um, and our three vintage workers and isolating those in, into a bubble to the extent that um, the three of them came to the winery and uh, camped out at the winery. Uh, Larissa was living in a van in the car park, really sort of able to isolate ourselves and lock down to um, deal with the harvest. This is my home. I'm living here for like roughly four weeks now, but grapes are still coming in, grapes are still growing, so we have to harvest our fruit. So that's why uh, me and Fathom Road and the winemaking team, we decided that I should move out home. So I'm living here now. We 
knew the fruit was looking great. The question is, was it making good wine? Winery team have had a chance to taste it. I haven't yet. I'm not in that bubble, and so I have to watch from the outside. I'm looking forward to having my first taste of 2020 Pinot Noir, but they're excited. Don't want to get emotional, but uh, what we were dealing with on the 17th of March is that we quickly knew that we couldn't bring our more mature harvesting crew in for this coming season. So when you've got to tell your parents, hey dad, you can't come, it's pretty damn difficult. And it's a massive shout out to those that couldn't come. So, um, but we're, you know, extremely appreciative of, the, you know, the harvest team and what they did for us in very challenging conditions. I like to think that they'll remember the 2020 vintage um, and we certainly will. And that is the last one. 2020, all done and dusted. Thank you. Thank that's over. Yeah. Bring on 2021. I'm hoping, like our Prime Minister, that the world after COVID is going to be a kinder place. It'll be a place that's thinking a bit more slowly. Um, the gains we've made on global warming in the last few weeks, hey, wouldn't it be great if we kept doing that? So there are upsides, there are possibilities for where we can go forwards with this. And it'd be a shame if a lot of people die and we don't learn lessons.